Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today because we are previewing the rest of Fall into Love. Uh, we had already done the August films. We previewed those. Uh, and now we are doing the September ones because fall is just that epic this year on Hallmark Channel. And <laughs> so, uh, and I, I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Elise Murray's here. Hi. Yay. And Cammie Clements is here. Hi guys. Been a while since I've done one of these. I know it's true. I was about that. <laughs> but, uh, but Elise, yeah, it's been a while. We haven't had you on since Christmas. How has your 2020 been? 2022 has been incredible. It has been very busy. Um, lots going on behind the scenes. I can't wait to share with you guys come mm -hmm. Christmas. Yeah. So you've been working more, would you say, screenwriting than um, writing novels? Yeah. Lately. So I think um, I've been doing a lot of the screenwriting, which has been great because it's given me time to invest in like a really big book project that mm -hmm. I've been working on. So um, that's about to go out on submission. It's this really big, epic, sweeping historical romance so it's a little different from what I have been doing in the past but um so yeah I've been working on the movies to kind of uh you know pay the bills while yeah. I work on the other big book project so That's I get so to have cool. the best of both worlds I'm very lucky oh I admire anybody who writes who I mean my sister's a writer and she just had her book published this week uh her first Aww. novel called Haven congratulations uh, yeah you should all check it out uh it's a uh, like middle grade novel about a cat i haven't I, yeah I've well, been, you I, are a very talented writer i will say not the kind of writing we do but you are a very talented writer oh, so, so you nice. have to give it up to yourself <laughs> oh well thanks i uh, i i dream about uh i i've done i I think this year i'm actually going to do NaNoWriMo i i don't know how i'm gonna pull it off in november but i just i i used to do it every year before i started the podcast and i loved doing it and so I'm like, I can find at least a, a few minutes every day to just write something. Mm -hmm. So even Absolutely. if I don't, so I'm, I think I'm going to do it, but, but Cammie, how have you been? Well, my kids started school today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All four of them. Oh my the gosh. House. So I'm doing great. <laughs> yes. Well, good. That's good to hear. And uh, I celebrated my birthday yesterday and that was fun. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday yeah. day, Thank day you. late. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if you agree, but I feel like this fall into love block, the August movies for Hallmark have been extremely strong and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in September. Would you agree, Cammie? Yes. I would agree that they've been very strong. They just haven't been very fall themed. Yeah, that's so true. Far. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm just like, where's the fall? I mean, and I where's haven't really, I haven't cared that much because it's like a million degrees outside in summer. Oh, yeah. But I haven't really, they should have just called it something else in August, uh, <laughs> Summer Nights Part Two or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, but that's true. We have have gotten... the, we had the fall cake. You know, uh, yeah. we had we had the fall cake with uh, with Rachel Boston and Paul Campbell. We had we had them doing a fall cake. I went ah fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. There, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. The Blue Sky River. It. I mean, I guess that's not technically falling to you because it was on movies and mysteries, but right. it, it had a little bit more of a fall -y feel i think it actually the and i would say journey had also she was, she was there for the summer so it yeah i mean i don't know it just was like out in nature <laughs> so oh. it was kind of like there were trees and it felt a little bit but uh but that's true i don't know uh that that there haven't been that much fall and fall to you that's yeah. very true but uh have you gotten to watch any of them elise any of these um, August movies? i I recently watched um, Love in Style. Is that what it was called? The Romance, the Romance in style. style. Romance in Style. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I that thought was that was so, so much fun. Um, I thought the acting was stellar. I thought the writing was so strong. Like, I absolutely loved it. 10 out of 10. Like, a million. Um, mm -hmm. What's above an orange? Oh, <laughs> Going back diamond, rings. Diamond, diamond rings. Diamond rings. <laughs> a million diamond rings for romance and style. Yeah, I really enjoyed that too. I thought JC was great. I hope they keep using her. And people, mm -hmm. some people were saying that, oh, it was too heavy handed on the body positivity, but like it was part of the plot. It was her mm -hmm. job. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, like, I think 
it's like for me, you know, obviously like body positivity is a big part of what I do. Like every yeah. one of my books almost has like a plus size heroine. Like for me, I think there are like the more that they hire her and the more that they work with like plus size people and more body diversity, the more we're going to get plots where she's just a baker or she's just yeah. this. Like, I think there should be room for both. And the more that they work with yeah. body diversity, the more we're going to have both. They were so making like, a I, big deal about it because it was yeah. her first one. Yeah, well, yeah. and so, because it actually fit into the plot. The mm-hmm, plot yeah. was about her as a fashion designer. So of course right. she's going to... So to me, I, the, it, it worked. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we'll talk about that next week when we uh, uh, we have our fall... I mean, our um, when we have our August recap. Uh, that'll be really fun. But, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one as well. And... Uh, so it it was a strong there wasn't really any one that I a- actively disliked uh of the August movies personally but we have movies coming for September we got a ton to talk about and just the amount of content that Hallmark is producing is absolutely amazing. I mean I can't think of any other studio that from uh, I think it was July 30th to September 4th they had 11 movies. Jeez. I mean Disney, Warner Brothers, all they're not making 11 movies in one month. Um, amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Plus television show, Just Be Shores started uh, in that True. time as well. Uh, it's, it's And very When impressive. Calls the Heart is filming right now. Yeah. So. yeah. And they're getting all their Christmas <laughs> movies ready. I mean, yep. it's just an amazing amount of content. <laughs> so uh, we've got... Good a ton of stuff to preview so this is gonna be fun and we're we're going to do it with our one two four leafs so uh, how excited you are for the product for the, oh, for the, film. the right background then yes you did <laughs> <laughs> um all right so we have the first one comes out on the third of september it's marry me in yosemite uh with cindy busby tyler harlow and According to IMDb, this is, I think, his only his second role that he's ever had. He has a movie with Lifetime coming up. Uh, it's like a one of those cheerleader movies with Lifetime. Uh, oh, cool. But that's <laughs> it. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does uh, being his first role. And it's this writer and director, Bruce D. Johnson. And he did a movie last year called Journey in My Heart. Uh, with ran and fish that i actually enjoyed i thought it was it was it was pretty decent yeah, and, a good one. yeah. and it's zoe is a successful photojournalist and they love the photographers in homer so yep. funny to me uh on request of her publisher she takes her next subject to be yosemite there she meets jack an intriguing tour guide who opens her eyes to new possibilities as they take a journey together so this is almost like a travel movie, but it's here in the here in the U.S. Yosemite. Uh, I don't. What do you think of this uh, this movie, Cami? So this one this one looks fun. It's uh, you know, it's it's something that Cindy Busby has done before. She's been a journalist and she's been a travel journalist. It was in Chasing Waterfalls. Mm-hmm. So. Now we're going into Yosemite and I, I've never been to Yosemite, but I've been close to parks up North in the fall and golly, they're really gorgeous. And so I'm really, really hoping for some really good foliage and some really beautiful uh some really beautiful scenery so we can all be leaf peepers you know (laughs) yeah what do you think elise of this one yeah i mean again i think it's like a little bit at least from the description it seems like a little bit of like familiar territory um however i hate the outdoors i do not ever want to be outside i'm very much an indoor cat however I do love to look at the outside. So I'm very excited for this to take me to Yosemite without me ever to have to like put on hiking boots or get like mosquito spray. So I'm very excited about this one, at least in that respect. Yeah. I mean, I love swimming. Anytime I'm in the water, mm. I'm a happy person, but hiking is my nemesis. I hate hiking. So I'm with you there. I just, I'm not, not I'm not good at hiking uphill. I'm, yeah. I'm terrible at hiking uphill. If I'm just on a walk or I'm going on a hike flat, 
I can handle it for a little bit, but then yeah. I just get, I get winded so easily. One thing that is, pardon the reusing of the word, but one thing that is intriguing is there she meets Jack, an intriguing tour guide who opens her eyes to new possibilities as they take a journey together. I mean, she's already a photojournalist and she right. seems excited about going to Yosemite. So what? turn could we possibly yeah. be taking here that's gonna that's gonna be interesting and it's always <laughs> interesting to see somebody new on on a hallmark channel that we haven't seen before yeah and mm -hmm. he is very dreamy yes yeah so he could be a find that would be what would be inspiring is to be up with Tyler Harlow I think more than more than anything else I know it's just so funny why do you think Elise that they love photographers so much in these movies well you know I think um like we always love a writer in these movies right like because mm -hmm. you can get them to ask questions and they can be engaged but um having the photography angle gives you something super visual to put on screen like it's not exciting to watch someone sit at their laptop and write a story but mm -hmm. it's very exciting to see the world kind of through their eyes um so i mean it's just like a very good easy kind of shorthand visual component um full disclosure a project I'm working on right now has a travel journalist, um, but she works for like an airline magazine and yeah. she hates it. She's like, this is the dumb. She like loves the travel, but she hates the fact that like her magazine is right next to the barf bags. Um, so we like to put like a little twist on it if we can, but mm -hmm. it is just a really good kind of, um, especially when you think these movies are only like 80 minutes long. Like you need a little bit of shorthand sometimes mm -hmm. to kind of get you going and yeah. a good travel journalist can be that. Well, and it's like a way to make a character creative without, mm -hmm. uh, without having to have uh, the the time it takes to make like a painting or a, mm -hmm. you know, or sculpture or something like that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's funny. I mean, because in Chasing Waterfalls, uh, she's also a photographer. <laughs> but that movie was way better than i expected it to be mm -hmm. uh, especially with the cringy promo that they did um so i ended up enjoying it is that the one um because they've been on a big conservation kit call mark lately mm -hmm. um it was that the one where in the promo he was like i really love the way you see whales oh no that was splash <laughs> of love that was splash oh, of that love. was very funny though <laughs> because okay. I was watching a, a movie the other day on Hallmark oh it was Campfire Christmas I did see that one too yeah, that was um one. and I was watching that one and he, he, I went to like get a drink and all I heard was I just really love the way you see whales <laughs> I was like I have to see this movie and I never did now I regret it oh yeah you should you should check it out yeah uh so I I I am pretty hopeful about this. I hope it'll be fun. I I think it's interesting that we've got this writer director uh, who did previously did this journey in my heart, the one uh, that's also an adventure movie. And so that kind mm -hmm. of makes me uh, it's interested. His thing. Yeah, it's his thing. Uh, so I'm going to give this three leaves out of four. What about you, Cami? I'm yeah, I was going to say three because I'm not completely jazzed at the idea but it looks very intriguing especially when it says marry me at yosemite you know mm -hmm. it was like oh you know that, that that piques my attention because they're just meeting and so how is that going to how is that going to happen <laughs> yeah yeah what do you think elise yeah i'm gonna give it three stars or three leaves sorry as well i'm gonna <laughs> give it three leaves and actually, now that you've said that, Cammie, I totally forgot my uncle and his fiance are going to get married at Yosemite. So <gasps> I have to at least give it three. Just you have to. It's like It's like research. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm Hannah. And I'm Katie. And we have a podcast called One Kiss Means Forever. Do you love made for TV rom-coms? Are you obsessed with Hallmark and all the Hallmark-inspired copycats that have come out on other platforms like Netflix? And while being obsessed, do you know that these are not what one might call quality films? <laughs> if so, come listen to our podcast. Each episode, we discuss one movie that did not have a theatrical release and always ends in a happily ever after. And how do we know it will end in a happily ever after? Because 
One kiss means forever, of course. So join us as we deep dive into each movie for about 45 minutes. Episodes drop every other Thursday, except during the very elongated Hallmark Christmas season when we join the Christmas craze and go weekly for about two and a half months. Bye! Bye. So next we have on the 10th, this is on Hallmark Channel, we have Merry Go Round. This is Amanda Shule and Brennan Elliott, director David Weaver, who's done a billion of these. And it's Abby is, su- is a successful executive moving to Paris and planning to marry Edward. Life is perfect until she learns her divorce her divorce to high school sweetheart luke is not exactly official so uh, what do you think of this one cammy okay (laughs) (laughs) number one edward is played by zach santiago and as a member of deliver me a podcast from sign sealed delivered Obviously, I'm going to be really, really thrilled for this. It's just going to be really hard to see him play the other man because we know he's going to get dumped. And it's very sad because because yeah. <laughs> I've, you know, we've only I've only ever seen Zach even outside of Science Seal Delivered. I've only seen him as an independent character. And so th- this could be sad mm-hmm. see him see him getting dumped. Yeah, because <laughs> it's the same plot. It's basically Sweet Home Alabama. But right. in that case she ends up with the you know with the ex-husband yeah again at the end so it's it's sort of interesting because obviously she can end up with brennan elliott in this and you're like what and this- he's the and he's the ex-husband mm-hmm. mm, yeah 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 so that's so, gonna be interesting to see how that all works out uh, but i think that this putting putting all that aside i'm really excited that we're gonna see zach more because outside of science seal delivered in the past few years he's only had little bit parts here and there so this is actually really exciting Mm -hmm. for postables to see him in a bigger supporting role and anytime brennan elliott is on the scene the banter is just up a notch he's really good at banter and just watching the watching the promo yeah you're still married i'm what hi honey i'm home like oh dear yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be a trip <laughs> it's kind of like it's like sweet home paris kind of <laughs> but so, yeah i i think i think this is gonna be i think this is gonna be a good one it's got a it's got a good strong trope something that a lot of people seem to really enjoy and okay i did not marry my high school sweetheart but i will be the first to admit i'm a sucker for the high school sweetheart i really am i really am i kind of wish my husband had been a high school sweetheart (laughs) so he could have that story (laughs) yeah second chance romance can be really fun it definitely can can be good um lise what do you think about this yeah i am really excited about this one um i don't think i'm like telling tales out of school because i think wyona lucas has talked about this in interviews before like one of the big mandates when she took over the network was like, I don't want you to bring me a good Hallmark movie. I want you to bring me a good movie. And so for a really long time, like divorce was such a taboo. You kind of had to like go to very extreme lengths to explain why like a 47 year old man had a child and no wife, you know, like for example. And I think one of the things that I love about this movie is not only is it like a real genuine conflict to which we sometimes in like the old days, it was very much like, here are two pretty people you like and here's a weird thing that they might be doing together, (laughs) you know? Like this is a genuine cinematic conflict that these two people are gonna have to navigate. And it acknowledges that they're both in their late 40s or she's maybe 43 and he's 47. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this is a a realistic thing that might be happening to two people in their 40s like in terms of emotional conflict and stakes and I think it could be like really delicious and fun and funny. Like I agree mm-hmm. I think Brennan Elliott has such a great such great timing. Um I am I'm excited about this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about all those things for some reason I'm a little skeptical on the chemistry. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe it's just the promo I don't know Mm -hmm. the two of them but they could really surprise me and I end up having great chemistry Uh, but uh, but that'd be the only thing that I'm kind of like "Mm -hmm." Uh, but yeah it looks it looks like it it's a lot of fun so I I mean I think I'd give this three as well three leaves what do you think Cami I'm I'm gonna go with a full-blown four Mm-hmm. I I am pretty excited for this one. I'm yeah. I'm really interesting because we know the end. 
we know what's going to happen, but I'm really excited to see how it's going to get there. Mm -hmm. That's, that's going to be the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's always the case with these rom-coms. Yes. It's like, you know, you, it's the journey, you know, that they're going to end up together, of course, at the yeah. end, but, uh, but well, at least what do you think? I'm going to go ahead and give it a, uh, no, your 2.5 leaves. <laughs> I'm, mm-hmm. I'm interested. I'm interested to see how it goes, but I'm not entirely sold. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. All right. So then on the 17th, we have wedding of lifetime. And this is Brooke Giorse and Jonathan Bennett, uh, Elizabeth Avalon and Ann Wheeler directors, uh, a recently separated couple rekindles their romance when they're inadvertently entered into a nationally televised contest competing for an all expenses paid for wedding. So Elise, what do you think about this? Um, I will say, I think the promo undersold it. Um, mm. cause in the promo, all it says is like, what would you do to win a, like to, like to win or whatever. And it didn't sell kind of the, the actual interesting bit, which is that they are separated. Now we're trying to win a wedding contest. I will say on the face of it, I don't know why you would want to win an all expenses paid wedding. If you're separated, I'm yeah, sure I'm obviously just... that'll be in like the first seven minutes is why this they'll, they'll, it'll be there in the movie. But right now, I'm not entirely sold. I'm sold on how cool the premise is. I'm not sold on how they're going to sell the premise, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity to not have it be a diverse, more diverse movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't understand why you wouldn't make this with Jonathan Bennett being the lead. And he Mm -hmm. just got married in real life. You could literally have his real husband playing (laughs) playing the lead i don't know i just i i'm a little surprised they didn't go there but i feel like they'll have decent chemistry with you know brooke and jonathan um she's you know she's usually she had kind of a rough spurt there for a while where i wasn't enjoying her movies but i i uh i when she's on she's on and i love her um so that's fun and evidently this has a lot more humor than he was saying Mm. at christmas con that this is a pretty silly more sort of uh madcap kind of a feel to it than a typical hallmark movie and he seemed very pumped about it uh at christmas con but uh what do you think amy that that's basically what I was going to say. This look like this looks like it's going to have a ton of comedy. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some slapstick there. And Jonathan Bennett is all about the comedy. Anytime he's there, you know, there's going to be a bunch of laughs. And so, and just watching, even though it's a teeny tiny little promo, you know, just watching her with that huge hat on and them tripping to run to get somewhere you you just know this is going to have a lot of physical comedy it's going to have a lot of slapstick humor it's just going to be one of those really silly mm-hmm. fun ones to watch yeah like he did uh I th- well no what that wasn't him uh, i was gonna say he did mix with the mediterranean but that that wasn't him that was um Mm-mm. jeremy jordan mm-hmm. uh they, they kind of look similar i think um but yeah sometimes it, it, hallmark does go and that that's a movie that had sort of a madcap quality to it that i enjoyed um so i i think uh that it could be fun sometimes it doesn't work for me like i, I wasn't a big fan of the um the five-star christmas it just didn't work for me uh, but um but it, when it works it works and and it's interesting they almost could have called i think this uh this instead of calling it fall into love they could have uh, they could have called it like a wedding wedding season or something because uh, most of these have something to do with they marry me in yosemite then marry go around and the wedding of a lifetime they could have just called it something to do with weddings autumn wedding fall <laughs> into wedding fall into weddings, fall into yeah. weddings. Yeah. they're trying to they're trying to take june weddings and put it with fall into love you know? <laughs> yeah i mean at least as a writer it it must be challenging to work in that kind of humor and to make it land yeah i mean it's it's really my favorite kind and honestly for a long time hallmark really kind of steered away from that like it wasn't the kind of work they favored um, but like I come from like my favorite one of my favorite movies of all time is The Awful Truth, which is what Stanley Cavell called like a comedy of remarriage, which is about two people who are on the brink of divorce, 
having to kind of find their way back to each other through a series of wacky, ridiculous circumstances. And um, like, I love that kind of blend that you saw a lot in the kind of the screwball era, true screwball comedy era, where it's like a little bit of slapstick, a little bit of banter, a little bit of like, you know, farce. Like, I, I think it's, it's very complicated, right? It's like building a house of cards. And once you put it in the hands of a director and actors and producers, it could totally fall apart at your feet. But when it's done really well, it's so rewarding. So what would you, how many leaves would you give this one? I'm going to give it a three. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be, I'm just giving out threes right and left. So I'm also giving it a three. <laughs> okay. So what would you give this? What, how many leaves, Cami? I'm, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with two. I'm not super excited for it, but I think I'm going to have quite a laugh. Mm -hmm. All right. Next we have fly away with me. This is on the 24th and it stars Natalie Hall and Peter Mooney. When Angie moves into her no pets allowed building, a parrot arrives unexpectedly new neighbor, Ted and the dog he's secretly sitting uh, for try to help uh, her find the bird's owner without being caught. So we don't have a promo or, tr or trailer or anything for this. No. Uh, but uh, what do you think, Cami? I don't really know what to think. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely got situational humor. <laughs> we, I mean, we've got we've got the no pets allowed, and then we've got two people hiding pets with different with different situations you know i do have to be completely honest and say my first thought is if you're dog sitting go dog sit at the house you know mm. <laughs> at, the, at the other place mm. where the where the dog lives but you know then we wouldn't have the situational humor uh i i don't know it's uh it it's uh <laughs> yeah well and it's wonder like why did they even make it why did it just be he, he owns a dog he is a dog why does he have to be dog sitting? <laughs> like it's more okay. unusual to find a parrot, but like 99% mm. of people have dogs. So like, yeah, I don't and, know. <laughs> you know, just the no pets allowed. That's, that's going to be funny because we're going to see a bunch of shenanigans mm -hmm. with trying to keep the pets hidden. And if the parrot is a talkative one, then it's going to be, right. Was that you? No, that yeah, yes. TV. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So. What do you think, Elise, about this? Um, I will say it feels more like an episode of like Three's Company, yeah. or like it feels more like a sitcom premise, right? That you yeah. would kind of yeah, like bang into it, and then like you're out in thirty minutes. So I'm interested yeah. to see how it sustains for you know a full you know eighty two minutes or whatever. Um, but it, and I think it, it's maybe a little silly for my taste, like having just talked about the awful truth which yeah. actually I think does have a parrot in it. I think um, <laughs> this might not be totally for me, but mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how they pull it off. But I also feel like Natalie Hall will be funny with this parrot. Oh, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Natalie Hall, she is surprisingly good at comedy. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't think she would be, but she can hold her own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, and I don't know Peter, this Peter Mooney at all. Uh, so, you know, it'd be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, I, I'm going to give this one a two, even though I do love Natalie, uh, but I'm not like the biggest animal person, but it can be done well. Uh, it could be cute, but it's, I, maybe once we have a promo, then I'll be a little more, you know, hyped for yeah, it. Yeah, so you can see a little bit more mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. I think I'll give it a two. What about you, Cammie? I'm going to go 2.5 because mm -hmm. uh, I do love Natalie and I mm -hmm. think that I think she'll be great. I like dogs, but my kids just recently tried to convince me to take a cat on. And I said, uh, uh, not <laughs> <No>. happening. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, I lived in Central America for three years, so I'm very used to the sight of parrots, but you know, this no pets allowed in the complex is going to be interesting. So yeah, let, I'll, I'll go with 2.5. What do you think, Elise? I am going to give it two leaves. And also I am, I will say I did have to give them like an extra half leaf probably 
because I'm so impressed that they were able to film a movie with a parrot and a dog. Dogs and parrots are so un- <laughs> uncooperative. Like um, the first movie I wrote for Lifetime, we had a dog in it and we had to rewrite so many scenes because it was like a big old senior dog and I just didn't want to do anything. So we just kind of had to have it lay and just be around and kind of mopey and sweet. Mm-hmm. So I am very impressed that they managed to pull off a, a dog and parrot movie. That's true. That's All right. Cool. So the next two are, they haven't officially been announced. Uh, and I got this summary off of another site not off of homework so it, it it might be more the book summary than the movie i don't know but it's called pumpkin everything it's sometime in october because i don't think we're going to have enough time to do a another preview for october mm-hmm. uh so we're just mentioning these kind of more briefly uh and uh, this will be on homework channel this stars Corey sevier and taylor cole Jeff Beasley, who's done tons of these, and this is like a super long summary, so bear with me. It's welcome to Auden Brew, New Hampshire, where this romance is sweet, the lattes are spicy, and more than leaves are about to fall. After calling off her fall wedding, poor novelist Amy Fox is left with a broken heart, uh, a mega case, and a mega mega case of writer's block, and a serious aversion to all things pumpkin spice. When she receives news that her grandfather has broken his wrist driving through a Dunkin' Donuts literally straight <laughs> through the front windows 500 miles away in her hometown of Ottenboro, New Hampshire, Amy has no choice but to return to check on him. If she doesn't make sure that he's back on his feet, Grandpa may be moved into assisted living and Amy's beloved child at home will be put on the market. Knowing she must return, Amy worries about the only thing worse than pumpkin spice a reunion with kit parker her childhood best friend first love an entire reason for skipping down in the first place as the two reconnect a second chance seems possible if only kit weren't holding on to a secret that just might unravel everything so that's this a lot is very pumpkin spicy <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> but, um, thank you yeah we should give it you. one one out of uh we should give it a score out of four pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> but, but yeah i mean a lot going on here we've got the hometown house we've got the grandfather driving through a dunkin donuts, <laughs> driving through a dunkin donuts. <laughs> we got her hating pumpkin spice uh, which i think is really funny and <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Taylor Cole and Corey Sevier. Uh, what do you think about this epicness that we have here uh, in Autumnboro even more? Elise, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is, it definitely feels like a book summary to me. I will say that, like, mm-hmm. especially compared to the other ones. I think this is probably pulled from the book. Um, I think it sounds, for all the wacky kind of notes in it, um, I do think it sounds like a fairly conventional Hallmark movie Mm -hmm. um so I'm interested to see how it differentiates itself and look I have been begging Hallmark for more fall movies more Halloween movies so I will take what I can get and I am very excited for all things pumpkin yeah she's a horror novelist that's Mm -hmm. exciting (laughs) yeah um what do you think Cammie I'm too busy laughing (laughs) I will say one thing though. We've never seen Taylor and Corey together. This is going to be a really, really interesting pairing. Two very well known Hallmark actors. We've just never seen them act together. And so I'm really excited to see these two well known actors who have somehow not made a movie together yet make a movie together. And just the the pumpkin everything is just that that's that's just funny you know (laughs) i mean that that title that synopsis that screams fall which is what we've been wanting is if we're gonna be fall into love we want fall i'm i'm with elise i want i want another halloween movie we haven't had a halloween movie in years and i gotta have something to watch on halloween night you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so, I, yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see how the, if they have chemistry. I wouldn't have put them together, but 
No, we'll see. Was- yeah, that's the that's the fun part about all of this mixing and matching is there are couples that you like, I would never have put them together, but then they mm-hmm. seem to do pretty well. Like uh How to Fall in Love, Eric Mabius and Brooke Dorsey. Never in a million years would I put those two together, but they pulled it off really mm-hmm. well, I thought. Oh yeah, that's so, one of my favorites. Yeah. Um yeah, so this one I will I will give I mean I give this summary four four leaves but uh as far as the movie i will give it uh two and a half what do you think elise i'm going two and a half leaves as well two and a half pumpkin spice lattes and five spice lattes and what do you what do you think cammy i i'm gonna go with three because mm-hmm. this is just intriguing enough for me to actually be excited about this you know because i had only seen that little teeny tiny millisecond shot of the two of them together i'm like oh taylor and Corey are gonna be Mm -hmm. in a movie together but after all of this this wow Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is a lot packed into one packed into one movie it really is i mean i I gotta get this book it sounds like a great (laughs) book we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. So then Girlfriend's Summer Getaway, again, this hasn't been announced officially, uh, but um, uh, this, I, I, I'm guessing they'll probably change the title because I don't know why you would have a summer getaway movie and fall into love, especially in October. It feels weird. So I'm, I, they'll probably change the title. But anyway, it's Tamara Mowry, Lindy Greenwood, Crystal Joy Brown, and Brad James. After a booking mix-up, Samara's birthday getaway turns into a week-long journey where three friends rediscover their passions, their purpose, and romance. So, Cammy, what do you think? Um, I I think that this one could be really, really fun. I've always wanted a birthday getaway, but I I have yet to have one. I had my first ever girls getaway last year when I met up with Casey and Jess. That was the first time I had ever had a girls trip. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so having yeah. a birthday getaway and the booking mix up, that kind of intrigues me because usually it's kind of a circumstantial comedy, but it looks like this birthday getaway is something that the friends were already planning on doing. It just looks like maybe it's going to last longer and I can't tell if they think that's a good thing or not. But I mean, this this seems like a this seems like a, a strong, solid movie for uh mm-hmm. for for a lineup. I do agree about the summer getaway. Like mm, let maybe can we do autumn getaway and stuff? Yeah, I think they'll change <laughs> the name. I at least that would make the most sense to me, but who knows? It would it would um, too as well. And I do think the cast seems great. I mean, I love Crystal Joy Brown. She's great. Mara is great. Mara is uh, awesome. Yeah. So I think it'll be a fun movie. I'm going to give it uh, three and a half leaves. Do Do either of you know Lindy Greenwood or Brad James? Because I do not know those names. No, I don't know that. I do. Um, Brad James is the star of my upcoming um, Lifetime movie, uh, mm-hmm. uh, New Orleans Noel. So Brad James is married to Keisha Knight Pullum. Uh, Pulliam, oh. who is the other star of my New Orleans Noel movie, and she directed this project. It's her first directing gig. Um, she, so, oh my gosh, that makes me so excited for that one. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be a really cool, interesting sort of um, movie. I think it'll be yeah. interesting to see her first time directing gig, and I think this is his first time on Hallmark. So that'll be exciting too. He's handsome. I'm looking at he's IMDb. very handsome. Yeah. 
So wait, he Keisha, looks really good in a suit. <laughs> yeah. Keisha directed this one, or she directed mm-hmm. the Lifetime one? No, she directed this one. This um, oh. Girlfriend's Week Get Getaway is Summer oh. Getaway is her oh. first directing project. Cool. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Um, there's also a uh, Autumn in New York movie that we literally know nothing about. We don't have the summary, but we know it's coming. Uh, so hopefully that will be fun. <laughs> But uh, all right, now we're moving on to movies and mysteries. Okay, so on Rachel, the were we gonna were we gonna rate this one at all? Oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Um, mm-hmm. I so I three point five. I said for mine. What, uh, Cami? What would you rate this one? Well, now that I know that Keisha Knight Pullman is directing, that makes me super excited. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with three point five as well. Mm-hmm. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Okay, so now we're talking about movies and mysteries. We have To Her With Love. This is on the 11th. It's Sky P. Marshall and Tobias Trevelyan. Uh, two teachers fall for each other while saving their school's art department. Uh, we don't have anything for this yet. Uh, we don't have a, tra- a promo or poster or anything. Uh, so it's hard to know. And I don't know either of these actors. It could be cute. It's hard to know. What do you do you think? Do you agree, Elise? Yes, absolutely. It almost gives me like, um, I don't know if either of you are watching the show, but Abbott Elementary vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I like I think like teachers really fighting for their students and falling in love is just absolutely adorable. So mm-hmm. I am very excited about this one. If it gives me those same kind of like warm posies as Abbott Elementary. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Cammy? When I was in high school, I always you know, wondered what it was like if teachers were dating or if teachers were were together or if they were married. So this, especially the, the, how this can turn out really good is if the students are involved. Mm. You know, if, if we get a little bit of, of jarring from, hey, Mr. So-and-so, are you going to see Miss So-and-so tonight? You know, that That'd if they cute. get them involved, I, I think that will make it a whole lot more fun. And uh, and then saving the school's art department, that uh, while it's something that we have seen before, you know, fight together to save a cause, it is a very, very real uh, situation that a lot of schools have to cut the music program, cut the theater program, uh, cut the mm-hmm. art program. So that uh you know that aspect that makes it that makes it good wait so what would you give this one elise i'm gonna give it three leaves yeah i mean i wish i knew more i wish i had a trailer Mm -hmm. or something like that a promo uh but i'm gonna give it two and a half what about you cammy i'm gonna go three just because the i actually elise you talked me into it (laughs) at first i was like oh boring but then you start mm-hmm. talking about the teachers I'm like oh yeah yeah that that could be interesting to watch so yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go three okay then we have the secrets of bella vista this is on the 8th of september and it's rachel lefebvre and niall mater uh, director heather hawthorne doyle who's done tons of these when tess inherits an apple orchard along with a half sister she never met she unravels the mystery of the family who abandoned her ultimately finding a new understanding of herself so cammy what do you think about this i'm very intrigued 
I, I really, really am. And I love Niall. I love Niall. I think he is fantastic. And this sounds like one of those really good wholehearted mysteries, you know, that we can really throw ourselves into and it's not a murder mystery, which makes it different. Mm -hmm. And, but it still is a mystery and we can take that journey along with Tess, finding out who her family is, finding out how she inherited the apple orchard, maybe meeting her sister and, you know, just following all those clues. I think this is going to be really, really fun. Mm -hmm. It is kind of funny that they describe it as inheriting her half sister. (laughs) I mean, that's a a new kind of inheritance. No, no, she inherits an apple orchard. No, I know. She says, oh, okay. inherits an apple orchard along with a half sister. She never met. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I think it, it, uh, it looks interesting. Uh, I, I think we'll have to see about the chemistry between these two. I mean, like, again, we don't have a promo or a trailer or anything. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think I, I agree with everything you said, Cami. Uh, what do you think, Elise? Yeah, I love the setting. I think the setting is really fun, like especially if we're going on that fall theme. I think it's a perfect setting. And also, you know, I love Nile Mater and I am a Twilight fan, so I have no choice but to stand <laughs> to stand Rachel. So yeah. I am very excited to see her in this. So what would you give this one? 3.5. Yeah, what please. do you think, Cammy? Yeah, 3.5. I think I'll give it a three, but, uh, but I'm hopeful. So, all right. Then we have Francesca Quinn PI this on the 25th. This stars Mallory Jansen and Dylan Bruce, uh, Anthony Mechi directing when private investigator, Francesca Frankie Quinn's fiance is murdered. Her, her, his sister hires her to find the killer. Frankie must work with Wynn, the local detective assigned to the case. Uh, so yeah, this is interesting. I mean, I, I, I like Mallory a lot. I like Dylan a lot. Uh, it's pretty intense. Her fiance, mm. we haven't had anything like that since Haley, uh, Haley, Haley Dean. Dean. Uh, so that's interesting. And I mean, it's just kind of nice to get a mystery again, cause we haven't gotten hardly any this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, what do you think, Elise? Yeah, this one feels very um, and I guess I'm not as familiar with the Hallmark mysteries, so maybe I'm totally off base here, but it feels especially dark. Um, and so I'm interested to see how they pull it off. Um, although one of my favorite detectives of all time is Francis Frankie Drake. So I love the name. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen the Frankie Drake mysteries, but they're from Canada. They're amazing. You all oh, should watch really? them. Um, mm-hmm. They're so good. It's like if you liked Miss Fisher, it's like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's set in the 20s in Canada. It's excellent. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I'm a little nervous. True crime, or, or I guess crime and mysteries are not always my thing. Um, so I might not be the target audience for this, but I'm interested to see how it plays out. I mean, it seems like it would be hard to be the investigator for your yeah. fiance's murder. That would be tough mm-hmm. uh, to me. But uh, Cammy, what do you think? Yeah, that's a completely, that, that's a complete, uh, problem with a shoot. Why am I, why am I conflict of interest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's a complete conflict of interest. You are way too emotionally attached to that case, (laughs) but I have to be honest. I don't know where this came from, but the first thing that popped in my head when we read the synopsis was High School Musical. This is the start of something new. <laughs> because this could totally turn into a new wheel. That's what it sounds like. It mm. sounds like the first movie of a new mystery wheel that they're mm-hmm. trying that they're trying to get going. Mm-hmm. And cuz there can be 10 movies on this kind of thing depending on where they go with the solving of the fiance's murder and is she going to fall in love with Wynn and all of that so this this is this is definitely darker like Elise said and it sounds like they're trying to see if it will take off and start another wheel so yeah I'm I'm intrigued so what would you give it what rating well, because Mallory's there as Frankie, that's going to up it big time for me because I, I just adore Mallory. I think she's fantastic. 
in the in the screenplay that I'm writing, I want her to be one of the characters. So <laughs> she has had a good run with her pen pal was great. Yeah. Uh, and um, 12 Dates of Christmas. Mm-hmm, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go three. What do you think, Elise? I am going to go probably a two leaves. Not, not nothing about the quality, just about uh-huh. my my personal taste. Sure. Yeah, no, I actually agree. I I just, if they're going to be able to pull it off with her being so close to, it, it does seem a little bit dark. That that um, seems really, really soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. The next is another one that's just been announced. It has not, we have not gotten the, I mean, that we've gotten the rumors, I guess, but we haven't gotten the official announcement of it is perfect harmony. Uh, and we don't have a date, uh, but this stars James Denton and Shepard Denton, his son, uh, and Sherry Psalm, uh, directed by Stefan Skyeni, uh, the script by Alicia Lomez Gross, who is a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. So Yay! I'm so excited for it. This is amazing. Uh, and it's, when their mutual friends Naomi and Simon are ready to tie the knot, they ask the duo to be best man and maid of honor. Uh, Barrett is a buttoned up college professor. Jack, on the other hand, is a laid back former pop star. They have been like oil and water since they met 10 years prior. But to support Naomi and Simon, they agree to set their differences uh, aside. The Let's see. Uh, at the engagement party, Barrett is horrified to learn Jack's plan for party music was nothing more than a playlist. She guilts him into performing, but he insists she join him on stage, much to his son Teddy's dismay, as Barrett also happens to be his professor. Jack and Barrett bring down the house with their duet with uh, that, and the frost between them begins to thaw. As Jack and Barrett continue to spend time together, Leading up to the wedding, they surprisingly find themselves getting along. Slowly, they begin to change their perceptions of each other and find they may be more in tune than either of them would have imagined. So that sounds pretty fun, I think. Uh, it, 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 I mean, I love James Denton. It's going to be fun to see his son in the movie. Uh, I don't know Sherry this, uh, but I don't know. I think they're kind of banter back and forth could be really fun and you get to hear james sing so what do you what do you think Kimmy? i love when they bring their kids on and they act together i mm-hmm. think that that's that was one of the most disappointing parts of aurora tea garden is they made this big huge thing that their daughters were going to play them and i thought that's so cool but then we saw them for like two seconds but no i wanted to see more of that but so that we could see more of their daughters being them but uh but i love the idea of julia benson and peter benson playing the couple because i'm also a sucker for real life couples playing couples in movies so uh, yeah i I I don't know. This looks this looks interesting. This looks fun, and I'm definitely a James Denton fan, and I love the idea of hearing him sing. So mm-hmm. I I don't really think that I have a big opinion of whether or not I'm really excited or not. I think I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy this one. Mm-hmm. So would you give it uh, three leaves? I'll I'll go with a two point five. Okay. Uh, and what about you, Elise? What do you think? Yeah, I think the cast is very stacked. I think it's really cool. I'm so excited to see the cast. I will say, I don't know that I've ever seen a Hallmark music movie that's ever really worked for me. Um, I don't know why that is. It just, it hasn't, including mm-hmm. probably my own. Like when they wrote, when we had Wes do a music scene, I was like, I don't know about this you know <laughs> like sometimes it just doesn't work it doesn't yeah. work for me it's not my favorite trope um so I'll probably give this like a, a 2.5 leaves um I'm gonna give it a 3.5 I mean maybe I'm biased because I'm super excited for Alicia to get her Yay, first Alicia. Oh, sure, yeah <laughs> that's amazing uh and uh I actually do like the music when they can bring I like those ones with Debbie Gibson they were pretty good I think yeah. and um 
So uh, those are the first ones that come to mind. But that one with with the country at heart, once we finally got to see it, it was pretty, it was okay. It was decent. Uh, so uh, they usually are, I mean, anytime you can involve music, it's usually a win for me. I'm a sucker for musical, as we all know. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give it a 3.5 leaves. Um, well, we have one more. This is on Netflix that I wanted to cover real quick. Uh, <laughs> because I figured our audience would be very interested in it. It's Love in the Villa. This is on September 1st on Netflix. It stars Tom Hooper and Kat Graham, Mark Steven Johnson, who we have interviewed on the pod. Uh, so you should check that out. Um, it's a, a young woman takes a trip to romantic Verona, Italy after a breakup, only to find that the villa she's reserved was double booked and she'll have to share her vacation with a cynical British man. Uh, so... <laughs> What do you think, Cami? Well, this is Hallmark's One Winter Weekend, only it's yeah. just the two of them. Mm -hmm. So, and I I loved that one. I thought they did a really good job with it. And so I have high hopes for this one. Um, and Your Christmas Getaway, that would be another one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Christmas Getaway is another one. And I watched the I watched the trailer for this one and it looks really, really intriguing. And just <laughs> her. And that is why Romeo and Juliet is the most romantic story ever written. Cut to the classroom and it's <laughs> they're, they're fourth graders or something like yeah. that. Like, not interested. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I think Romeo and Juliet is, I mean, I guess if you like romantic tragedy, it's the most romantic, but yeah, know. it's, it's <laughs> a little bit of a exactly downer. The most romantic story ever written. <laughs> <laughs> and that's coming from a hopeless romantic yeah but and then you can't beat you can't beat the british accent there's just yeah. something about the british accent yeah. that's going to endear anybody that's why i was so sad they didn't have jack use his british accent in the in the winter weekend series i'm like oh no don't make oh, him yeah. american make him british <laughs> i love his accent what do you think elise I am so excited. <laughs> oh, oh boy. My number one most anticipated movie until Christmas. I am so excited about this. I have the biggest crush on Tom Hooper. He's in the Umbrella Academy, which is one of my favorite TV shows. He's my favorite guy in that. Like, I am so excited about this. I cannot wait. I love the kind of like forced proximity elements of it. I think Netflix has done some really good romantic comedies kind of in this vein like I loved the one um where she goes to Australia and she gets a, a house and mm -hmm. like you know like I think they've done some really strong ones and so mm -hmm. I am super excited about this I this is like a full forest of leaves <laughs> I am so excited yeah Don't what do you back tell us how you really feel yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm excited too. I hope it'll be really cute. I like Kat Graham. She, all of her Netflix uh, mm -hmm. rom-coms have been pretty good. I liked um, the Operation Christmas Drop and mm -hmm. I liked the um, the one, the holiday calendar, I think it was called. Yeah. The, so both of those, I liked them. Uh, and uh, uh, Tom Hooper, I don't, I don't watch the Umbrella Academy, but he seems super dreamy. So that's mm -hmm. good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh yeah i'm gonna give this a i haven't given i haven't given four leaves yet so what the heck i'll give it four leaves i really hope it's good what do you think cammy i'm gonna go three i'm just i'm gonna be a tiny bit reserved because i don't quite know what to expect but i i think it'll be great yeah well, let us know if you're listening, what you think, uh, what are you hyped for? And as we always say, these previews mean nothing because they could end up being amazing and, uh, or not, not good. We just don't know. So it's all in mm -hmm. fun. Uh, but Elise, thank you so much for joining us. This was so great to catch up. And if people want to follow you on social media or anything like that, how can they do that? Yeah, you can find me at writer Elise. That's W R I T E R A L Y S, and I'll be there. Come chat. Great. And Cami, how can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Cami Drama Girl, and you can also find me on Deliver Me a Podcast and Hardy's Hotline. 
Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod and the Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. That helps us a lot. And uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. And we also have our patron group, which people like Alicia can be patrons and you should totally check it out. It's super fun. And then we have our merch store, which has tons of fun designs, including fall designs. So if you want to check that out, we would be very grateful. And thanks to both of you. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Happy fall. Yay.